William Shatner, better known as Captain Kirk on Star Trek, or TJ Hooker, depending on which show you like better, uh, will have to wait an extra day to blast off into space after Blue Origin postponed its suborbital trip until Wednesday due to windy conditions. Ahead of that flight, though, I had the chance to speak with Shatner and the rest of his Blue Origin crew. Uh, Shatner, at the age of 90, will be the oldest person ever to visit space. It's great to see you all this morning, uh, William Shatner. A lot of excitement, as I know you know, um, about this trip, especially for you. I was really struck by how candid you've been in some of your interviews that you were a little terrified, you said, a little frightened, obviously excited. Um, this weather delay, is that helping or hurting those feelings? It's extending the feelings. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's a combination of, of, uh, of things. It, it's not all terror, although there's some uh, bubbling elements, elements of that. But also, I'm uh, thoroughly versed in the safety of what we're doing. And we've been spending days here in and out of these very difficult chairs. It's, it's a great workout, getting in and out of these uh, prone chairs. And, and we've been lectured and told about the safety uh, procedures. And so that adds an element of, of surcease from the niggling uh, elements of dangers. Uh, I, I feel comfortable, but I'm also uncomfortable. I'm, I'll be very happy when we go up and, and we're in weightlessness and we know we're safe because everything else should be all right. And we have that moment of inspiration, which I feel will be there when we're looking into uh, the vastness of the, uh, of the universe. It, it is quite a moment, I think, uh, for a lot of people to even just try to wrap their head around. So to know that you'll be experiencing it. You talk a lot about the safety. Audrey, I, I know recently 21 of your current and former colleagues uh, wrote an open letter. One of their concerns was specifically safety. They said they wouldn't get on one of these flights. Did that give you pause at all? Uh, it, it didn't give me pause. I, I've, I've been working at uh, Blue on the New Shepard program specifically for the past eight years. And um, my, my, a team of very, very talented professionals and colleagues, some of the best that I've worked with in my 20 years in, in human space flight, um, have been committed to, to the safe operation of this program. And we've very methodically moved to um, uh, these, these human flights that we've just started recently. And um, safety has, has always been throughout the design and test and now moving into operations. That's, that's always been our top priority. Uh, Chris, um, you know, William Shatner got the call. As I understand it, you made several calls. You were really lobbying hard. I know you wanted to be a part of this. Um, you have really worked throughout your career to boost excitement among kids in STEM. Um, and you look at this, you've said, as, as a mission. How does this flight further that mission for you? Well, I mean, space has always been the domain of governments. And, you know, when I was a, a kid, I wanted to be a NASA astronaut until I found out I was partly colorblind. And I was denied access to, you know, I was denied uh, admission to the, the Air Force Academy in Australia. So I had to find a plan B. And it's pretty remarkable now that 60 years into, you know, the space age, there is a plan B and there's a way for regular people to go to space. So I'm really excited to be part of this journey. And I think in another 60 years, we'll look back at this, this week, this year, and say this is when the human race finally began to move into space. So it's, it's a really exciting time. Glenn, you're also using this as an opportunity to raise awareness um, about what's happening back here on planet Earth, I know, with your donation to water.org. Um, what else do you help, hope, rather, comes out of this flight for you? So uh, I've seen it in life sciences and healthcare, which is what I work in. When, when you have an industry that has this innovation being fueled by people who, who are passionate about the future of humanity, exciting things emerge. And I don't know exactly how space technology and people going to space is going to change society, but I know that it is going to. And I know that the faster we get more people up there and do things like what we're doing at Blue, the faster we'll make that technology and those benefits available to people all over the planet. This is about the democratization of space and bringing benefit to everyone around the world. And, and I appreciate you to point that out. You know, we have a lot of problems to solve here. This is about solving those problems. Um, real quickly, before I let you all go, there's a lot of talk about are you or are you not an astronaut after a flight like this? So I'll just go down the line, Glenn. You can go first and then on to Audrey. Will you consider yourselves an astronaut once you're back on planet I mean, Earth? Yeah. 
I'm going to consider myself a changed person, and it doesn't really matter what you want to call me. <laughs> Audrey? I will. I'll, I'll take the astronaut title. I, I would very much appreciate being held in that, in that club. William Shatner, astronaut. How's the sound of that? A small, small A. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by two S's. It's a little uh, jeopardizing. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, don't, I don't think it's fair to call this tourism yet. Yeah. It's, it's too early in, in, in this new public space age for us to call this tourism. You know, there is risks, and I think all of us have made a decision to be part of this flight and to, to be pioneers to help open the door to space for everyone else. But, you know, this is space exploration. This is the first steps into space for, for the human race. Great to have all of you with us this morning. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you on the other side of your flight. Thanks again. Thanks for having us.